this is one of the notebooks where I have my notes on an interview with Robert Moses. I don't use a tape recorder. When I started doing these books, it was so long ago, tape recorders were not in general use. When I interview someone who's important in that he spent a lot of time with Robert Moses, I don't interview them once. I go back and interview them over and over again because the more they talk about something, the more they reveal something. Hard getting to do that, you know. I had been in power for like 40 years when I started doing the book, and a number of famous biographers had tried to do biographies of him. He had stopped everyone basically by saying what his public relations men said to me. You know, Commissioner Moses will never talk to you. His friends will never talk to you. His family will never talk to you. And then they had some sort of phrase, which I don't remember exactly, but what it meant was no one who ever wants a contract from New York City or New York State is ever going to talk to you. So what I, what I decided to do was I drew a, a series of concentric circles on a page. In the center was a dot, and that dot was Robert Moses. So the first circle was his family, and I figured he could stop them from talking to me. The next circle would be his closest associates. I could stop them, then his closest friends. But then you get out to circles with people who only encountered him once or twice in their life, and he wasn't going to be able to think of all of them and warn them not to talk to me, or he just wasn't going to remember them at all. So I started there, and I started working in towards the center. And at some point, someone must have told him that this guy, Caro, is in, not stopping. He's interviewing people. So suddenly his daughter, Jane, called me, and she said, I, this is the way she took She said, Papa Bear, she called him Papa Bear. Papa Bear says he'll talk to you if you'll give him complete approval of the manuscript. I said, no. She, then she said, so he won't talk to you, and slammed down the phone. About a week later, she called back and she said, Papa Bear will talk to you if you'll give him approval of the exact quotes. I said, I'm not going to do that either. Like, then he'll never talk to you. As this went on for some calls, and then finally she said, Papa Bear will talk to you if you come Saturday. So you drove out there to his summer home, which was a very modest cottage in a place called Oak Beach. It's beyond Jordan's Beach. And he had the last cottage there. But what he had done is he had torn out the walls of two walls in the living room and replaced them with just picture windows. Out the left window, you saw Robert Moses Causeway going over to Fire Island. And out the right window, you saw the tower of Robert Moses State Park on Fire Island. And he had a big black leather chair and he sat in the corner. So when you were interviewing Robert Moses, you're interviewing the man surrounded by his monuments. Very intimidating. His manner was also intimidating. He had a, an immense, I think he was 77 or 78 at the time of that first interview. But he, his presence, if you want to call it that, was immense. You talk about his presence. I remember once he was talking about this road that he was having being stopped from building on Fire Island, and he leaps up from his chair and grabs my arm and sort of pulls me out on the deck with him and points across the bay to where the Fire Island and says, can't you see there ought to be a road there? And for a moment, in his presence, you did see that. 